for this Kaiser lat pull down, we've got a couple of things on setup. The main one is just making sure that the seat height is on the number that we have indicated is the right one for you. For me, that's usually number five. And then if you get the weights up pretty heavy or the resistance is pretty high on this, you're going to want to use this uh, retractable seat belt here. Clip yourself in because as soon as the weight gets up pretty heavy, if you're pulling yourself the way that you're supposed to, it'll actually pull you out of the seat if it's pretty heavy. So you may use that if you get the weights up a little bit higher. In terms of our initiation and intention on this exercise, what usually works best to kind of get yourself set up on the exercise first is just to kind of grab them when you're standing up and then just sit down here, get your elbows kind of tucked down to the ending position here. We're then going to make sure we're engaging our lats by kind of pulling our elbows in towards your lower back. And my intention on this exercise is to vividly imagine with every ounce of my being that I'm doing a pull up over a bar like you would be doing if the bar did not move and your body moved. That's one of the main things that's gonna help us orchestrate this exercise, right, and make sure we're not pulling back with the elbows or curling our wrists down. We're just trying to imagine we're pulling ourselves up out of the seat and that just makes everything kind of fold in one nice line in here uh, when you're performing the exercise. Our contraction here is gonna be the muscles between our shoulder blades, trying to tuck them down and in towards our spine and our back pocket area. And then our elbows coming down and in will make it so that we get a good lat contraction and those muscles that kind of go, you know, down here across your back. Those are what we're looking for on this exercise. Tempo, nice and smooth, that red light, green light idea. You can get away with going a little faster on this one because it's pneumatic resistance and no inertia. If you really want to, as long as you can still make sure you're focusing on all of the other execution essentials, contracting the right muscle groups and such. And then our range of motion here, what usually, where people will go wrong with this one, is they'll try to get, let me do this so I can talk, people will try to get so far down that, like I was showing before, their elbows kind of fly backwards like this, internally rotating their shoulder, you kind of curl your wrist down. Now those are, neither of those are things that we want to have happen on this. So just making sure you're really vividly, with every ounce of your being, sometimes closing your eyes helps, imagining that you're pulling yourself up over a bar where these two handles would be, and that will usually help keep you from doing those things that I just mentioned. So if you try to force too much range of motion on the way down, that may happen, and in terms of on the way up, what we want to ideally do is be able to get up so that the shoulders can actually elevate up uh, towards the ceiling, which then allows us to work on pulling them down and around and in as we come down. However, if you have some cranky shoulder stuff or some neck stuff going on, you may not go all the way up. You may find a point of going up to where you start to feel some of that jamminess kick in, and that's gonna be your ending point on the way up if you have some of those weird sensations going on. However, if you can operate reaching all the way up and pulling all the way down, that's gonna be better if you can do that while focusing on all of the essentials and without any pain or discomfort. This is a great machine for strengthening the muscles of your shoulder blades, helping out with your neck and a lot of different other awesome things. So if I've included this in your program, this is how you use this ideally.